And it says it's setting it up for uh, Facebook Live now. With This is our Freedom Fridays. We've been doing this for about three years now. We originally started on a radio show and we'd tape it while we were live on the radio. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we are um, officially live now. Uh, that it, aren't we excited? And thank you, Dave. We are so ecstatic for you to be here. Uh, educate me on what convinced you to join us today. Well, you of course convinced me, April. Uh, your your cheer, your enthusiasm, and your persistence on <laughs> getting me to spend some time with you. So we, you and I, go go back uh, a few years. Uh, and your your motivation, positivity, and your faith had just uh, really connected, and we've kind of partnered a lot of things, and so I am uh, thrilled anytime I get a chance to kind of get on a platform uh, mm -hmm. and share my passion for leadership, for service, for, for doing, uh, helping our communities be a better place. Uh, I'll jump at it at any time, so uh, that's why I'm excited to be here, and it's Friday. You. And, it, and it's, what do you call Fridays now, again? Uh, Thankful Fridays. Thankful Fridays, I love that. And you have a, a wonderful story about that. Do you wanna share that real quick or do you wanna dive into the leadership platform first? No, I'd love to share it. Uh, we basically, and I work in healthcare and every morning we have a daily, daily safety briefing and it actually comes from the military uh, to understand all the leaders have an understanding of what is the status of our hospital operation this time and every department reports out. And on Fridays, I, you know, we do this every single day and it's not always good news, a lot of work going on. And with the COVID, it's been extra pressure and stress. So uh, for today's thankful Friday, I told everybody, okay, at the end of this, I want you to just take two minutes, get your phone out and text somebody who supports what you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. And just send them a simple thank you, whether it's a partner, uh, a spouse, a leader, a peer, and just do that. And uh, I was incredibly blessed. I expected, I sent like three or four of them out, but before I even get my three or four out, I received probably a half a dozen or so. And it just emotionally moved me that um, the things that I do are affecting people and they just were very appreciative, a positive attitude and just doing something that simple uh, really makes your day. So it was awesome. And I have known about that impact you've had for a long time. <laughs> you have uh, grown immensely. Um, and uh, we started in a, our vocational education degree at Sac State many years ago. We both graduated with our bachelor's in vocational education that year. Uh, and it's quite a while ago now. <laughs> and yeah, yet yeah. We've, been, uh, we've been blessed to keep staying in, in connection. And I'm curious, uh, what has been the biggest growth you've seen for yourself over that season? Uh, and, and what made you dive into education and leadership? I mean, what makes it so important for you besides the military, which we're very thankful for your service? Um, yeah, it was uh, being in the, um, uh, I was an electrician by trade in the stationary engineer, working in the hospital, fixing things behind the scenes type of work is what I've done. Um, and to go get my education, uh, and especially at, at an education degree, um, and get into leadership has really, really changed my life. Again, it, it took me back to uh, a point of time to really stop in and asking and challenge my faith. Why am I here? What is my purpose? Uh, and what am I going to do? How am I going to make a difference? And the leadership platform, the education I've had uh, has just absolutely been phenomenal. Uh, the ability to get up every day and know that you're carrying a heavy load You've got a lot going on, but to be able to impact somebody um, in a positive way, to um, uh, have, have um, I, I want to say somewhat of the political, but the, the clout as a leader to help get things done as well is incredibly important. Uh, and so it, it's just absolutely been a true blessing. A lot of people in my field, uh, because it's not usually a high degree or a, a a degree program, you know, you're doing apprenticeship training, you're learning things, but you don't really go out and get bachelor's degrees. They're, they're kind of stuck. They're at a ceiling. And so to be able to motivate, inspire people to reach and continue their education, get bigger things is, is been a blessing. Um, the other biggest thing, and this is something that's recently come upon me is to really be a part of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is mm -hmm. incredible. I, I'm an old white guy. And um, 
I've got a lot of benefits. I've had a lot of things given to me. I, I feel I've worked very hard for a lot of things. I came from a broken family and, and a lot of things, but, but uh, there's a lot of disparity out there. There's a lot of inequity out there. Uh, and there's a huge opportunity to get on the, the, the platform and help, help women, help um, uh, different demographics, uh, the black community, just a lot of opportunity, especially in my profession that has a lot of, of Caucasian males, white, you know, so it, it's definitely another great platform uh, to be a part of. And so, I, yeah, I'm just blessed every day with the opportunities to um, make a difference. And your reaches, I mean, you've got, as you said, climbed up the ladder. I mean, you've been on a journey that sometimes surprises you, right? A absolutely. I, I work for an amazing organization, uh, Kaiser Permanente. It's a very large organization. And I've had the opportunity uh, to go to the regional offices, uh, impact across our organization from Georgia to Hawaii, to Oregon, all the way down to San Diego. Uh, and that was uh, an awesome opportunity. There's amazing people doing amazing work out there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I've, I've had some wonderful opportunities. And again, my education is what helped get me there. And again, I, I just was texting somebody on LinkedIn uh, yesterday about uh, the continuous learning. I am a huge audiobook fan. I think I've got, I looked yesterday, I had 150 some odd, 52, 53 books in my library that I've listened to at least once, if not two or three times. Agree. Um, and it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm very blessed to get the opportunities to do the things that I've gotten to do in my organization uh, and being for, with a large organization, they have influence across the nation. And to be able to do that with the association and other stuff is just, uh, it's been it's a lot of work. There's sometimes I think, Dave, just say no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and there's times you get to, right? <laughs> the, the rewards and blessings I get get me up out of bed again and say, hey, I'm thankful for what I, I've been able to do. And you're making a huge impact. And if you were, there's two major questions I want to ask you next uh, to wrap us. And I attempt to be very concise in our time to make sure that everybody gets value yet walks away with powerful nuggets. Uh, the first one is if you were to look at, you know, the biggest leadership things that you've learned over the years for you personally, that has impacted your journey, what would they be? One, two, whatever comes immediately to mind. Um, be, uh, there, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say one. And some of it I've recently learned to compile together. Be, be humble, be truthful uh, in, in who you are and what you are. Uh, because that's how you connect with people. Um, it's, I, I just, I can't say that anymore. That, that's done the most for me, uh, being just, this is who I am. This is what you get. I'm going to do everything I can to help and to learn and move through that process. Um, uh, Patrick Lynchoni just had uh, a thing that I listened to on one of the podcasts, mm -hmm. humble, hungry, and smart. Those are the best employees you can ever have. And mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely love that. I measure myself into that. And it's, it, it's, it's critical. You are a humble, confident leader, sir. And, uh, uh, and you live it out. And Patrick Lissoni is a, a wonderful addition to your resources of many I know you have. Uh, yeah. I wanna remind you of a coffee conversation we had a while back ago about a perception that uh, that process, uh, you remember that little beach ball conversation we had a long time ago? You're like, no. You're, you're pushing my memory there, girl. <laughs> Well, the reason I'm asking you is that one of the conversations I remind people about is that you, you're a sliver in everyone else's con, uh, our whole community. And you said it earlier about, you know, how we all have this opportunity to recognize Dr. Ravellis was one of, and I'm sure you might remember him from our Sac State days, a powerful leader. And he, he was an eye opener for me of all the awareness of, and we took diversity classes in our, our university uh, to be aware. And one of the things I work diligently to teach people is we're a sliver of the whole and we have an opportunity to make an impact, but we also have an opportunity to understand that everyone has perception. Everyone has an opportunity to overcome that. And so my final question to you is what perceptions have you, because we had a wonderful conversation about it then. And you know, I have a wonderful memory as you uh, <laughs> so appreciate at times. <laughs> and yet, uh, uh, 
you walked away from that conversation with a real and um and you took it into another meeting and texted me about it later and said that was really cool <laughs> and uh you're like oh i remember that <laughs> but uh the the gift about it is that's what i also love is being able to cause those light bulb moments and i think you're gonna what i told you about the gift of your platform and your ability to just be so wise is um what perceptions do you remember overcoming in your journey that really helped uh, not only yourself see things from a different way, but helped the ones you lead see things from a different way? Um, I, unfortunately, April, I don't remember that conversation in detail like you, um, but I, one thing that uh, I, I tell the story often is um, your exterior uh, expressions and how you carry yourself. And, and again, it goes back to some training that uh, I think is one of the, the Disney's books, Disney's books of being on stage mm -hmm. uh, is that you, people will read you. If you don't give them eye contact, if you're not smiling at them, if you're not acknowledging them, they will read how they want to read. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ability to, to properly communicate, to acknowledge, to, to listen, listen. I mean, again, we were given two ears and only one mouth and, and to make sure we clearly understand uh, what the other person is saying and perceiving of us as well as what they've heard from us as we've given instruction. So um, there, it, it is incredibly important not to just go ramrodding through with what you have and think that, I mean, it was an early learn for me. I thought as an early leader, that people will just follow me. I'll lead, I'll lead the horse to the water and it'll drink and they'll do what they need to do. And no, they'll just <laughs> watch that it. happen that way. <laughs> <laughs> just say, yeah, have fun with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so really being able to, again, uh, be humble, be, be a good listener and communicate to understand where people at, at their time and try to make sure that you're, you're able to serve and, and help them in what they do. So um, perception is is incredible, and again, I get the the EDI platform of truly understanding the um, uh, I want to say the 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 open doors I've had, the easier access I've had as a white male um, versus a, a, a female, an African American, uh, you know, any other descent uh, that. Uh, I, I've got to understand. I've got to stop and think, wait a second, there's something that I'm getting that somebody else is having to fight for or not get equity or an equal opportunity at. And that's the stuff you really have to, to understand the perceptions of what's going on. I so appreciate the way that you are paying attention to the needs and the awareness of what's happening in our world and making sure you're a voice in it and saying, hey, I may have a little easier way of being a voice in it, yet I recognize that I have an opportunity to really truly understand. And one of the things we teach in the coaching world is there's three different phases of listening. There's the listening to respond. There's the listening or the meeting, I heard you say that, so I want to make sure I, uh, some people believe in the one up concept and that's not very valuable, right? <laughs> uh, and then there's another aspect of, of you said listening to understand. And then there's a final aspect, which is a deeper, you know, many coaches uh, that spend daily process and our opportunity is to truly hear what's not being said to hear mm -hmm. all the opportunities for the open doors, as you said, of recognizing. Yeah. I tell people all the time, I've got a great chisel and my opportunity is to figure out which door you'll actually open. <laughs> and yeah. uh, because there's an opportunity that we all have layers and you, I'm sure have seen that over your career of working with people and helping them discover their opportunity to grow and to, to build their leadership and build their stage. And you have owned your stage, sir. I'm wonderful to watch. I was, I've been well-trained and around wonderful company. So I, I'm just, uh, just a vessel, but yes, thank you very much. I, I've enjoyed my, my uh, career, definitely. And you still got ways to go, right? <laughs> you got things you're working on still. Good. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff I'm working on, definitely. definitely. <laughs> Any final thoughts, sir? As I promised you, I would wrap up our, uh, quickly and efficiently. Anything you want to make sure we cover just to, to encourage and inspire and to remind people that we have an opportunity to unify and to understand and to communicate and listen. Anything else you want to add? 
no, April, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, again, I, I am so appreciative of our relationship and the, the work that you do, the, you. The, the, the coaching and the cheer you bring. It's always just such a positive uh, experience for me and a, an encouraging opportunity and, and a, every time we get together. So you help push me and motivate me as well. Uh, so I'm thankful for that. Um, I, I just uh, hope that somebody gets some, anything out of this. Uh, again, it, that uh, leads them to make a difference in what they're doing because uh, there's somebody around you that uh, needs to be heard and or needs to be uplifted. And uh, we all have that opportunity uh, around us. So um, please take advantage of that. And no matter what position or what role or whatever you're operating from, we all have two ears. What a wonderful gift. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Have an amazing weekend ahead. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye -bye. You too.